seek and destroy, just roll from there. All right, so we are catching up, as we've mentioned, exact same picks and bands. So we'll run through, it'll be Sion, Sejuani, LeBlanc, and Zin, the last two bands. You've already mentioned the Lissandra, it's still up and available. You've mentioned the Karthus still up and available. So we need to see the junglers locked in. Now, I don't think it's going to be a Karthus jungle. And the yeah. point that I wanted to make is because you don't have the same automatic lane priority. Because it is Kai'Sa and Alistar, they don't just guarantee that they're going to win the lane phase. And the thing about Karthus is you can skirmish and invade him early on because he must land his skill shots and he's very blue reliant. So I think it's a bit dangerous in this current setup and situation to look for that Karthus jungle that they had so much earlier success on. When we look at some of the other top tier picks that we have talked about a lot the likes of the camille the akali um still open and available um the lissandra we mentioned and it's not going to be one of those just yet memento again a golden oldie for him locking in kha'zix i feel like lissandra would work perfect with the kha'zix right now i love list with Ka uh with kha'zix simply because you can pretty much 100 to 0 delete someone in the duration of the frozen tomb between a high burst jungler and her cc yeah, and it really will work as well with the likes of thresh israel ergot a lot of combinations and we finally see the Akali locked in. So last so pick now. I think it has to be Lissandra. You see the Akali, it's often a pick into that. I would be surprised if Shaka didn't round out the composition with it. Yep, it is a matchup that we've seen a few times. Um, still the most beautiful one, uh, most beautiful performance. It is an actual yes. fact. <laughs> Shalka taking on um, a, a Fnatic last He's summer. Do Game it. one, Karthus Jungle. Okay, so you're not a huge fan of this, though, because you've already mentioned some of the, I don't want to say weaknesses, but challenges that Karthus is going to face. Talk me through what you see for the entire draft. I mean, effectively, if any of these champions do fall behind, I do, I do feel like it's kind of feast or famine for both of them. You know, if they miss their power spikes, then it's really difficult to keep up uh, in the game. With that Lissandra being picked out, that's the matchup that we expected Akali into list. So I love the confidence from Yankos here to say, you know, it's worth it. There are these holes that you can exploit. You can try to contest me when my laners don't have the priority push. They don't have the ability to collapse first and protect me, but I have faith anyway. We're G2, we're the boogeyman, we're the super team. Even with lesser matchups possibly in the early game, we'll still make it work. Okay, so that's the confidence side on G2 Esports. What is Shalka's composition screaming? Obviously, we're expecting this Lissandra to flip-flop over to face down Akali in the mid lane. I mean, you could just stick with the Urgot, however. It's not a terrible matchup. What do you prefer and why? I mean, I would always prefer the Lissandra yeah. because you can yeah. have the uh, easier push, the easier roam potential. Obviously, it's hard for a colleague to look for the assassination potential because of the frozen tomb. But I feel like it's kind of a game of chicken because, again, you're dealing with all of those flex picks. How are you going to match it? Who is going to follow who? Oh, I just love this. We've got such high damage compositions on both sides of the rift. The 9.1 meta that I've been watching has been fairly high action, fairly, you know, high amounts of skirmishes worldwide in the LPL, in the LCK, and in the LEC. And this just means I'm hopefully, hopefully, going to see a bunch of fights. Now, of course, G2, you've already alluded to it, slightly weaker in the laning phase. And Karthus, played by Yankos, will have a challenging time coming up against Memento's Kha'Zix in the early game. But only for brief windows are they slightly weaker in the lane phase. So, again, if the springboard happens, if they get off the... Uh... I don't want to call it aggressive gank because Karthus just kind of walks mean. into the lane. But if it all goes sideways, if they find the solo kills that this individual talent stack roster can, it can very quickly go sideways for Shalko. Those champions are very difficult to control when they're on a frenzy. And of course, this is where Shalka can prove they can play against some of the best in the league. If Avidage can step up and challenge Caps in the mid lane, you know, Europe's pride mid laner then this is going to be a very good signal for the rest of the spring split and Shalka no fear. That's the thing for me. This feels like this match is between contenders right now. Maybe you start putting SK and Misfits pending on their performances for the rest of the day, but right now Shalka and G2 are the clear front runners for me. I was very impressed with Shalka's vision and their macro play yesterday. I was just impressed with G2, frankly, yeah. and how they pressed their R buttons yesterday. <laughs> Yankos definitely going with the... Um mechanically high skill champion chuck those skittles out it's about as interact as interactive as Karthus gets yeah it does mean that he can move through the jungle very quickly with your skittles you have the aoe he's very dependent on the blue buff so he'll probably want to start that which means that it's obvious information for shalka yankos will start on top side how can we mess up his pacing and his tempo through this jungle there is one thing that does benefit the g2 squad frost you mentioned how reliant karthus is on the the blue sentinel and the blue buff when you've got an energy user in the top lane and no mana in the mid lane it does help at least in terms of who gets to keep um their hands on that buff so G2 Esports simplified the equation somewhat. But I'm going to turn my attention to Memento. I kind of have this feeling Memento could be the disruptive force for Shalka. 
to get his squad off to a good start. I mean, that was certainly the case yesterday. I checked the jungle proximity. Both Ignar and Momenta, uh, Momento had the highest jungle proximity to each other in the entire league. And it wasn't by a little bit, it was by a little bit. The average was about 15% and they were sitting at 21%. These guys held hands and they walked around the map. And I wasn't expecting that because they don't have any prior history together. So the synergy, the communication just looked so impressive from Shalka straight out the gate. It also means that the team prepared really well for the spring split. You know, the, the only player that remained on Schalke, and in fact, the only member of Schalke that really remained was upset. They have new coaching staff, new support staff, an entirely new roster, and they've, you know, demonstrated they can play together, but now they're coming up against arguably one of the, the favorites for the spring split G2. But I feel like they have this window where they can make the same type of success. Have Memento and Ignar get together, open up the map again, and just start camping Abadage's lane. I love Lissandra as a pick for him because he's shown the propensity to start playing around his jungle. It's not him that's creating the opportunities, you know. He's not leading the charge and laying the Lissandra ult. He's waiting for Memento to set the pace and to just back him up and reinforce that pressure. All right, so here we go. Let's see how the next few minutes plays out. Early laning phase, Nothing too exciting. You've already alluded to the fact that Schalke's vision game was very important yesterday. I think um, it's going to be very imperative to have strong vision against the likes of Akali and Aatrox will move. And look at this. Caps is already looking to bully out Abadagi. He's got Ignite available to him. And Abadagi's got the Flash teleport to respond. So got to be a little careful unless Memento comes to help out. It's the difficulty of trying to draft against G2. Even when you see all the champions, you have no idea where this puzzle is going to slot yes. together. The Akali being moved up into the top side. Still not a terrible matchup, but you can see Caps starting to get the better even three minutes in. Yeah, it makes me very excited to see when you consider the Akali and Aatrox performance as we saw at the hey, World look. Championship. And here comes Ignar and holding Memento. Hands. They're holding hands, but they need to find the death sentence. Ignar's going to step forward and Caps flashes available to him. As Get well him, Ignar. The dashes, but it's, the wave isn't quite pushing far enough away, so this may be just to alleviate pressure on Abadagi. And it's just great heads-up play from G2. You know, everyone could see the footage yesterday. They saw the Ignar momentum, uh, very early roams. And again, this goes back to upset on his Ezreal. Not only is it such a key pick, but it's very safe for Ignar to just leave him, let him get that solo EXP. He can safely farm with the Mystic Shot, as he's yeah. doing right there. So uh, Alpsa is not being punished for Ignar trying to make proactive plays on the map with Memento. Very, very exciting. Of course, Ignar was one of the very first, you know, high-profile supports that played in the EU, stepped up. Everyone remembers his fervor, Leona. And then a little bit of revisionist history. You forget some of the struggles. Uh -oh. Which we'll add on in a moment or two. A little bit of a glitch there on the spectator. Abadag is going to get the flash out, follow the glacial path. But summon a spell blown, successful gank for Yankov. Yeah, and super easy. Once you have level four on the Karthus, that's the big gank window, because obviously he has a point in each of his abilities, and he can maximize that wall of pain, hit the slow, and force the free summoner. I really like the fact that G2 are playing different type of compositions day to day. Um, yes, we've got that Karthus. Yesterday was very much around getting the poke down, and Karthus finishing things up today. A lot more in your face. Uh, if a Cardio or uh, Aatrox don't get the kill, then you expect Karthus should be able to finish it all. And the big stat that stands out here is just R six times. <laughs> and that's all he needs to do. The rest of the numbers, they don't even matter because Karthus late game, it puts a timer on everything. After a certain amount of items, certain amount of damage, he just presses it and he ends the team fight before they begin. So uh, there's this big window that Shaka must make something happen or Yanko, uh, Yankos will just automatically dominate the game. Yeah, such a scary champion. And really, really surprising and, and exciting to see him back. Um, I've had my solo queue games get become very depressing by Jungle Carthuses in the past, and it's very fun to see it being played in the professional scene. And we need to see whether or not Yankos can have the same impactful game as he did yesterday. Different flavor, different style. And Mickey's now the man that was roaming. Got back, picked himself up, a pair of boots and some control wards. And once again, just pushing into this lane, which Perks and Mickey seem content uh, just to be playing out fairly safe for now. Big difference between those champions is kind of the gold that they want to back on. So you can see that Upset has already gotten his back end, has the Sheen, which makes him such a strong dueler now. Whereas Perks, he's finally going to take his back. Uh, Mickey wasn't going to be looking for a gank there at an item disadvantage, but 3v3 now. All right, the death sentence already secures a flash. Mickey decides to flash forward over it. That's a lot of damage onto Memento. He's running for his life. Get hit by the safety. Now the Void Seeker comes out. First blood picked up by Perks. Better collapse there from G2. An excellent target selection there as G2 now, 
giving that gold over to Perks, making sure, hey, you're playing an ADC this time around, let's start you on the right foot, especially in a Kaisa where you normally don't see her take off in the lane phase. It looked so good. It felt like Schalke had the collapse on the go, but I hadn't noticed Caps had already left the mid lane. He was first to respond, and that means he helps Schalke out. Plus 800 gold. And Abadagi just continues to be bullied in this middle lane. And Mickey taking full advantage that he has a back here. All right, let's take a look. I need to get some CC down to Abadagi. No flash, but he's got his ultimate. So again, just a little bit of a threat, a zone. Abadagi doesn't make a misstep, so he's able to escape with his life. And if you're Mickey, you might as well go fishing for those types of opportunities because Perks was in his base. He was taking the 30 seconds to walk back into lane. So see what you can get while it's on. Um, this was a great wall of pain to really separate the team fight. And then once Memento was picked away from the herd, it was just very easy collapse from G2 and a great job passing the kill onto Kaisa, give her a bit more gold in her pocket. Extremely heads up play. Mickey jumping onto Memento, realizing how squishy that bug is. Uh, gone skirmishes, double longsword. It's very easy to kill Karzix. And right now, there is some support here for Shalka. So Memento uh, should be able to steal this away. I think he's got smite available. Looks like it might be a smite fight, though. So lay waste and smite he secured. It. Yanko says, thank you for the gifts. Thanks for the leash, mate. And of course, incredibly important that Karthus does get that blue. Not so important as the first one, but obviously the second one does help him maintain that tempo in the jungle so he can continue to farm up. Yeah, exactly. And for Yankos. Already off to a good start. 0, zero 1 got himself that Fiendish Codex, and with Upset spending a fair amount of time farming alone, down 7 CS. I think, again, credit to him for how he's playing this landing phase out. Ignor's just trying to zone a sort of threat in a death sentence, making it more difficult for Perks to poke Upset out under the turret. I mean, unfortunately, with Perks being the benefit, uh, benefactor of that kill that went down, it kind of felt like a lot of the effort and pressure that Ignar had been applying on the map hasn't been rewarded. In fact, it's punished. You can see a level disadvantage now. Memento also at a disadvantage. It's, uh, it feels like G2 kind of won the bottom side. It went through the jungle, and now it's starting to bleed into everything, and they are starting to take the entire map inch by inch. Yeah, it's really beautiful play from G2. They're responding as a unit. Every time some sort of engage happens. Now, Upset actually uses He's the arcane danger. shift forward. No. He knew the lantern was available. Ignar's been playing back in that lane. It's risky, but it worked that time. I just feel like it's a it's a gamble of like who's going to get to the lantern first yes. because if Alistar beats you there. Well, then he beats you into the crowd. Whoa. End of story. <laughs> Goodbye, Flash. But I, I actually do like the fact that Upset and Ignar are willing to play a little forward. I think if you play to, if you play to not lose, you're in a lot more trouble. Uh, let's take a look at this as Abadag is in trouble. Got the ultimate available, no supports from anybody. But keep remembering, oh, bottom lane. Abadag goes low. Um, Karthus will jump in there with that Requiem. And Abadag is going to go one ultimate to save his life. Bottom lane, no dive yet, but it looked like they were setting up for something. I think there was a back. I just caught it out of the corner of my eye that Memento was in that jungle. Looked like he was about to get hit by Alistair and then I think reset his positioning there as top lane. Oh, flash. Defensive flash from Oto One that's just going to run him down. Requiem should be able to pick it up. And Wanda stands by to easily secure it. Now all of a sudden, that's the engage! No ultimate! Abadagi, you've got to press R! That's really important! Now, flashes for flashes, teleport comes out. Memento is able to pick up the reply kill. Perks completes the teleport, but there's nothing more to follow up. And G2, 2,000 gold up. Didn't quite calculate the damage. Needs to take a page out of Yankos' book. Press the R key. It will certainly help you out. But that's the other strong point about Karthus, is that you don't have to go for the all and you don't have to go for the tower engage. You just say Hey, Garthus, you got your ultimate available? I don't need to dive. All right, no, you Speaking don't, but will Upset need There's to dive? Are. Ignite is thrown down, Flash used defensively, Perks chases him down. It was a pixel perfect Void Seeker that interrupted the recall. And G2 Esports are starting to accelerate this game. I mean, across the map, they just won every single lane top, mid, and now bottom. And at some point, Shaka now need to say, how are we going to break this? What are we going to target? And if that's, you know, we repeatedly put our bot lane down there, maybe throw everything in the kitchen sink to make it work for them, or they decide to swap it up and go for the Rift Herald. Yeah, that'll have to be a question that Shaka needs to answer, because at 10 minutes, this kind of gold lead feels terrifying. We do have a very brief pause, ladies and gentlemen. And there's one thing that I realized, there's been so much happening in the bottom half of the map, we kind of ignored the Akali Urgot matchup until the kill happened. But in terms of how that's playing out, I mean, Wanda's doing a good job. He's marginally up on CS, and he found the solo kill. I think just punishing Oda Wamne's over-aggression in that lane. I mean, frankly, when Karthus is in the game, it's never going to be a 1v1 post-level 6. It's always going to be a 2v1 because you don't need to overexert yourself to try to dive and chase for those kills, especially with high damage champions like Aatrox and Akali. 
All right, so of course you can see Yankos coughing there. Unfortunately, this is a pause and caps aside. I want to acknowledge that he is a little bit uh, unwell. I will get an update from you exactly what the cause is in just a few minutes' time. But let's turn our attention to Schalke. G2, they've, they've shown up. They've shown individually. They're starting the game by outclassing Schalke. But Schalke do have some tools in their kit, especially if they can find some small skirmishes. Uh, the combination of champions that they have can really, really blow somebody up quickly. Uh, so outside of just finding picks, how else do Schalke get in this game? I mean, they need to unlock themselves from the lanes and, like you're saying, kind of team up and use that synergy between the Lissandra ultimate, the burst damage of Kha'Zix, and getting down there with the hard CC that Ignar's Thresh can support. But unfortunately, they keep fishing for a lot of these roams. You know, Ignar is teaming up with Momento, but it's just the power of G2. You're still dealing with a star-studded lineup, and they just have that heads up awareness that hey Ignar's probably looking for a roam here then Ignar spends some time he loses out on the experience he starts to fall behind in his own lane so you can only do it so many times before you start punished even though nothing happens on the map like G2 didn't have to flash away for a gank they just had to stand to the other side of the lane I think it's such a good point because a lot of the members of this G2 esports squad have played against Ignar uh, a lot a fair amount in the past so anticipating some of his uh, tricks and tendencies can benefit them. Uh, while we continue to investigate uh, the reason for the pause, we do have a couple of replays lined up for you, starting with, I don't know, it's a surprise. So this is I'm just a solo here. kill. Yeah. Talk me through this, Frosco. Well, Akali pressed your buttons on Odo. <laughs> he flashed away. I mean, I, to be fair, I don't think Odo was ever really going to be safe there, even before the Karthus came in, but it was a nice fadeaway. And of course, as we jump to the mid lane, this was Memento, at least getting something back. I didn't actually notice in the setup originally, uh, but Odo was fairly low in that lane. It was about 60% HP. And um, literally just got cut down where he stands, even before the Karthus ultimate. And now, of course, this was the bottom lane engage where Upset gets caught out. Overextended forward. He's going to get sniped by perks here. The 360 no scope. He just watched him walk into the bush when he had vision and he uses his ultimate to reposition and follow up with the flash. Well, that's just really well played. I mean, perks. Look, it's, it's a little bit of a guess, a uh, fairly educated guess. You could see where uh, um, Upset was standing in the bush, and it just sucks to see that happen on this level of stage because Kaisa already got first blood earlier on. Now gets almost donated that second kill. Um, and on a champion that already scales so incredibly well, it's so difficult to see how you're going to handle you know, that situation as we load back into game and G2 take the first track. Now, I really like Ocean Dragon when you're kind of like pre-8 minutes, but theoretically, as long as you're in the lane phase, you're going to get so much bang for your buck in the ocean because the region is going to help you just continuously sit there and exploit if you have winning lanes, which, again, across the board, uh, G2 now sitting in four kills and each lane donated. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them just outclassing Schalke. So, you know, we came into this sort of going, right, if, if Schalke were going to be the dark horses for the title or at least competing at the top of the table, this could be a good litmus test, you know, to see... How do they match up? What goes right? What goes wrong? And again, it's a long spring split. Nine weeks of regular season. So for Schalke, let's see how they play this mid-game and see if they can bounce back with a deficit because truly great teams that are contenders for titles are able to come back from early mistakes. And they do have a comp that can do that, especially when you think of the Urgot, the Lissandra, as well as what upsets Ezreal can do in the later stages. And you know, it was really interesting, Trevor, when I was talking to you guys earlier, there was kind of like very different thoughts about how to sit on the hype train for Schalke. You know, I see them as they just went into the finals. I'll hold the thought, though. All right, let's take a look. Wanda's going to get chunked down. Fear Beyond Death is available for Odo Wamna. He catches him through the shroud. And Akali players everywhere felt that one. There you go, Odo. He actually had a great game yesterday, at least in the lane phase. He solo killed Cabo Shard once. He almost killed him twice. A lot of people will point out the fact that he got caught, I think, three times in the mid game. But the lane phase looked good. So <laughs> we'll write off that initial kill, Odo. It was the Karthus. It was unfair. It was 1v2. But there you go. Get the return. Let's bring us back to Shelka because as you mentioned, there's, there's sort of differing schools of thought. And, expectations you were touching on the fact that they come off the back of the finals and they've had a pretty strong rebuild yeah i was all about it. i was like they know who their franchise player is it's upset this guy is a mechanical beast we say it all the time so for me i was like huh. they went to finals they kept one of their best players they got some uh, excellent talent in memento and oda and as well as ignore's return i'm like ah, i can get behind the shock i'm still on the hype train now will the franchise player go down lantern is available not gonna get caught not gonna get found what? upset does it but take a look at this killer instinct comes forward Requiem's available if it's needed it's simply not needed 
Shalka, they split the difference. Rift Herald picked up on top. They sacrificed their duo, and Abedage completes the teleport as well. This is just going to be gifted to G2 Esports. And an excellent turret aggro juggle right there that they get three for nothing, as well as the tower, a huge swing in favor of G2, and showcasing why they are our favorites for LEC. Oh, such a good performance. And yes, Shalka, they do get themselves a tower with the help of the Rift Herald, but they're down. 4,000 gold, they're down five kills, they're down a dragon. Now Oduam is picking himself another fight. There is some support for Memento, but it's just, that's the level of, of teamwork that was not shown yesterday. Yesterday, Schalke were on the same page, same, you know, a uh, 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 strategy. And I'll finish the thought in a moment as Oduam gets jumped on, and he might just be caught down. Pulled backwards by some infernal chains, and he does get taken out now. Oh, this is cheeky. This oh, is oh. cheeky. Oh, what? No one move. Ladies and gentlemen, if you play solo queue, and if you see an enemy top laner that overextended, there has to be a reason. Check your bushes, people. Memento gets out, but even he's scratching his head going, how did I do that? I... Oh, big balls. Big balls. <laughs> no doubt about it. But this is going to be a replay of the bottom lane. Look at the mini-map, and this is just um, uh, unlucky or... Bad, I'll leave it to dealer's choice. Um, okay, so the teleport changes. As soon as Abadage, like, I'm going to say to trust fall. He's like, yeah. guys, I'm coming in. I have to follow this clown car. So I'll reward him for that. They're on the same page. You know, you said the communication. They stand together. They die together. But G2, it wasn't the fact that they were just diving with two members. They had four members there. They had the wave pushing in. They juggled the uh, tower aggro beautifully. So just next level execution there. I'm going to go with you. Trust Falls is actually a really good one. Because as you mentioned, once you start shedding that TP, you cannot stop it. And the obvious call was help save the tower. Unfortunately, that was the wrong call. But we can praise that the team did it together. You're basically on the top of the roller coaster and you're looking at the drop and you're like, I definitely don't want to do this, but I'm strapped in. Yes. <laughs> that was the Lissandra TP there. Yeah, there's no way to get out of it. Once you, you, you look down that hole, and Shelko now down a 5,000 gold hole. Um, if you look at the item differences as well, Ghost Blade, Gun Blade for Caps and Wonder respectively. Storm Razor picked up for perks, working his way towards that Hurricane. So, you know, G2's comp is fully activated, fully online. And that's before you even add in the map-wide Requiem that is just the, the finishing touch on any play that you two want to put made. I mean, the short and sweet of it, Trevor, is you never want to fall behind this composition because its team fights are so strong. But they're going to try. All right, let's take a look. Mickey throws down his ultimate, blocking a lot of damage for now. Lantern is available. Memento goes oh. in. Fear Beyond Death is dodged away from. And that is just a melted Urgot. Caps isn't done yet. He fancies himself a shot. He's gone in 1v4. Requiem starts to channel. And boom! Boom! Yankos gets himself another. It's 10 kills to two, and Caps gets out with his life. It's not done yet, as G2 are still I'm looking diving. for more. Here comes Wanda, and Schalke and Ulfia are just falling further and further behind. I take it back. It wasn't a good pick. They had a numbers advantage, but it didn't matter. The gold difference, the champion select, the draft, it all speaks for itself. G2, they looked like they were on the back foot. They immediately turned it around. The uh, innate tankiness that Mickey is bringing with his ultimate on the Alistar, you just can't delete him. No, you absolutely cannot. And, you know, when we, we started this draft, Frost, one of the big points you really wanted to bring up today was talking about how G2 Esports have this huge threat in the flexibility of their players, the depth of their respective champion pools. And now we're seeing perks on Kai'Sa, 303, one of the most high profile role swaps in history and definitely the biggest in EU LCS and now LEC. And him along with Caps are just obliterating Shalka. I mean, the terrifying fact is, is that even if a team, you know, eventually does figure out how to match G2's power in the draft phase as they continue to assemble these, these compositions, even something like this, which doesn't seem to have as much innate synergy as the comp they ran yesterday, you still just can't match them on their pound for pound talent in each position, that they can get away with executions like that. So you give them any sort of lead, give them a finger, and they're going to take the whole damn arm. Yeah, seen that before many, many times. And Mickey is going to use that Hex Flash to do a little bit of a, a moonwalk off the side of the screen. Um, right, week two LEC. Uh, I'm going to give every team in the league a free tip. Ben Yankos' Kothis. Let's see whether or not anyone does next week. For now, though, Mickey will be going down. Just caught a little bit out of position. Good warding from Schalke allows them to punish the overextend. 
And it is a small solace, but they need a lot more of those to claw back this deficit. And again, if we're focusing on good aspects of Shaka, although, again, I'm going to have to hold it. Let's we're take fighting. a look. Perks has got the Hurricane, he's got the Storm Razors, and he's got himself another assist. It was, in fact, Caps. That's now 5-1-2 and two with a 700 gold bounce. I don't think it's going to end there, Trevor. Wonder is being headed off by Ignar. I think he changed his mind. Wonder, like, turned around, gave him Isaac, and I was like, I'm sorry, sir. I think he would blow Ignar up with one rotation, oh, no. especially because Yankos has got Requiem available. The box goes down, the flay's been used, Abadagi's coming in with the ultimate, death sentence goes wide, but the re-engage from Wonder picks up Ignar. Requiem's not even been used yet, and look at the claw of doom. Abadagi escapes with his life, upsets trying to turn this one around, but you need to kill Yankos and stay healthy enough to survive the ultimate. Not gonna go down just yet, whoa! Yankos kills upset, I didn't think that was gonna happen and give us a memento for free because G2 get another one. Ladies and gentlemen, Odo Amne was joining his team, but like lambs to the slaughter. Shulka being killed. Perks has got the red buff and, oh, this just feels a little bit bad. Gonna run him down with that rage blade. Here comes Mickey, here comes Mickey. Gets the head buff, pulverize. And Caps is in behind as well. I am starting to feel a little bit dirty. Shulka have family, Shulka have friends, G2. This is obliteration. They just need to calm down and they need to reset the map. It feels like these fights are going on far too long, that people are walking across the map, that they're getting involved in situations that they don't need to be, and they're giving up gold when it doesn't need to happen. So again, I praise the synergy, the communication, Shalka, they stand together, they die together, but let's maybe slow down on the dying together. 10,000 gold down at 20 minutes. And of course, there is one thing that you do need to mention in terms of these two team compositions. When a squad, either of them, gets a lead, there are so many tools to just keep killing somebody, and the moment you get that item advantage, it becomes so difficult to come back. And of course, it's it's the back end of the fight with the teleports that keep coming in that continues to fascinate me about Shalka. Yeah, and it's also the, the volatility of these champions and how quickly things can turn sideways. But Abadage, again, some fancy footwork. He does manage to time it perfectly that I believe it was as Kaisa reset her position, Lissandra also reset his, and he gets out, I think, with like 10 HP. I actually really want the observers to click. Oh, oh clench. That's so close. All right, I'll actually, I'll find out. You, you tell me a story, I'll find out how much was there. Well, the story is, is that I actually really want to pay attention to how Shalka uh, set up their vision. So they still have great poke opportunity, and it's still very scary for G2 if they want to turn on the Baron. Like, that's the one safe space that Shalka can really threaten. It's what stalled out the game against Vitality and eventually led to their victory yesterday. But I think it might be a little bit too little too late with this gold difference. Yeah, so there's the Baron setup. Yeah, and of course, Ignar is three, four autos, five, about six or seven autos. Plus a couple of Ikathian range shots in there, easily run down. Difference. Oh, it's so difficult. Thousand gold bounty for perks, 900 gold bounty for caps, 850 gold bounty for Yankos. I can promise for next week's LEC, I'll have a quick stats update for you on the largest bounties and who held them. Because this is going to be one for the 2019 season. Baron easily picked up. Carthus's lay waste just melt that objective so quickly. Oh no. Requiem, Requiem, dun 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 dun! Not this time around. I was a little more hopeful for that. I'm I was also lie. very concerned <laughs> for Memento. I actually need to take a closer look at his itemization to see why, if he's got some additional MR. But G2, 12,000 gold now, and Baron. And they've just got a high damage composition that allows them to steamroll. And they're looking to break Misfit's win record yesterday and see if they can win the quickest game of spring so far. But I do want to talk about, even when Yankos isn't picking up kills with this Karthus ultimate, the fact that he immediately ulted as soon as they have Baron, it's just about forcing them away from the objectives. And that was what was so clever about the composition yesterday. It was a siege composition. They know that they're here just to take the objectives, to snowball the game, and to basically do League of Legends quick. And you don't have to find the kills for Karthus. You know you're going to be sieging? Get those guys off the tower by lowering their HP pools, that they must go back to base, otherwise they're in fear of a dive threat from the Alistar. I really, really like that analogy because that's what wins games at the end of the day. If you get the objectives, you get that global gold. You also gain vision superiority. Look at the vision that G2 just pushed into that upper quadrant. Thank you for the zoom out observers. You know, a couple of control wards, a couple of invisi wards that are now slowly being cleared out, but it's lots of information for G2 to work with. And then you can see them now going, well, Hey guys, there's an outer turret remaining in the bottom lane. Do you, do you want to take it like right now or, or, or just now? Um, and it looks like right now is the answer. 
And when you do find yourself in this type of situation from Shalka's point of view, the first thing that you must do is defensively clear out your jungle and find those wards, which again, Shalka's vision control, still gonna have a lot of credit to it. They're very far behind in this game. It doesn't look great for them, but they've at least now gotten control at least over the top side of yeah. their map. So they recognize the steps that they must take to create and neutralize this map for them. All right, let's take a look. Teleport being channeled on this inner turret. Perks is trying to turn the damage around. Remember, this is kind of a two on three, but Shalka didn't fully commit. Now the is running for his life. Perks jumps in with the killer instinct. Yes, a death sentence lands, but it's sentence it's like not to death. The box comes out and G2 are between two turrets. Easily gonna set out yet another kill for Wanda. That's a double for him. 19 kills to four. And Schalke are now losing their base. Um, Frost Curran, I do need to tell you I'm ever the optimist, okay? So I have to try and look at the silver lining here I've for Shalka. Really bad news for you. <laughs> okay. I think the game's about to end, Trevor. <laughs> but Shalka are going to learn a lot from this particular moment um, because really it just fell away from them entirely. The Nexus turret is falling. The kills are not done yet. The franchise man upset is down. And before 24 minutes, G2 had won the game. Just after 24 minutes, they kill the Nexus. And when is anyone finally going to challenge G2 and make them show us something? We haven't gotten to see their, their huge macro performance or them really stretching the draft. It's just the mechanical talent. They take any match that they want. They got solo kills that felt like across the board, 2v2 kills on the bot side, 1v1 kills in both uh, top and mid lane. They don't even have to try to win these games. No, they don't, and it, it does leave a lot to be desired. Uh, G2, the team that is expected to be in the final with this big change, they played to their expectation, arguably surpassing them. After yesterday's performance from Schalke, I'm a little sad to see crumble, but I also understand that the team compositions we're very much stacked that if you didn't get ahead, it was going to be tough to catch back up. And frankly, you're still against G2. And the more footage that we get of G2, I think people are going to be a bit more understanding as teams continue to just get wiped by this super team. Yeah, I'd really like to see a couple of hugs there between Wanda, Perks, and Mickey. But for Schalke, this is a gigantic, gigantic defeat. You really need to go back, look at those individual decisions very early on that ended up costing them, and I think all credit to Caps. The very first blood, he was there in experience range before anybody from Schalke had even really realized what was going on. So, outplayed on the day, and Schalke go 1-1, G2 2-0 in the debut of the LEC. And who is finally going to make this team stretch? Who is actually going to make G2 sweat and make it look even a little bit competitive? Well, I mean, that's a good question. I don't have an answer for you right now. We, we need to see more games. I mean, pending on Fnatic's performance, because that's what everyone was looking towards. This was supposed to be Fnatic and G2, and this was going to be the clash of the Titans, because frankly, in all of G2's championships, they've never had to go through like a top tier Fnatic to get yeah. it, to meet them in the finals. And so if this continues, if Fnatic can return to form, if Nemesis can step up. That's the soap opera I'm looking for. I want the boogeyman of G2 versus the, the dynasty king legacy. Oh, what other words do you throw in on there? <laughs> I'm not touching it. That's your you jump on that egg grenade. Like a comet. <laughs> I just want it to collide, quick shot. Well, we'll find out. I mean, Fnatic need to step up and show us just how good they can be because yesterday left a little to be desired. Um, oh, but on, oh. on the side of G2, I'm trying to be see optimist, remember? I'm, I'm <laughs> gonna, I've got to bring up the, the happiness here. Uh, but for G2 Esports, just a phenomenal, phenomenal debut. We saw the Zoe out of perks yesterday. We saw the Kaiser today, it adds more questions because in terms of picks and bans, we've also seen the Victor bot lane here in LC. We've seen a lot of Cassiopeia bans, Cassio elsewhere in the world. So this meta is not yet stabilized, I think is the word I want to go for. And, and I want to see which team gets ahead first and then starts to dominate the league. And I think people are going to start to extend a bit more trust to Perks. He did finally play an ADC. It's also an ADC that he was given a lot of attention, and a lot of resources, yes. but uh, proving that he can actually 2v2 down there with a traditional marksman. We're going to start counting the days like day 300. Perks still hasn't played an actual marksman in this position yet. I mean, I really like the idea that Perks is now taking on Upset, one of the up and coming AD carries from last year. He had some help. And Perks is one of the up and coming AD carries this yeah. Uh, listen, we want to get some of your thoughts, uh, so please head over to Twitter at LOL Esports and vote for your Kia player of the game. Is it Caps on Aatrox, Perks on Kaisa, or Abadage for some of those slick blue suede shoes dancing moves? If you were allowed to vote, who would you vote for? 
Ooh, I would think it has to go to Caps just because he created so much pressure himself. He was constantly winning a lot of those trades, make sure that or made sure that Abadage couldn't find any roams. He helped set up the first blood, even though I don't think he actually got to participate Correct. in it just because he rotated. And you already heard his coach talking about uh, just what a phenomenal you know presence he is in team fights uh, about how he commands and yeah. shot calls around the map for them. I think that is a fantastic answer. I like Perks because he was donated all the kills and then he finished the game as an AD carry player myself. Do that more for me, please. Uh, for more of G2's word, let's check in with Law and Ocelot. Thank you very much, Trevor. Fantastic start from G2 here, two and zero. Were you expecting such a good result from the very start? Uh, expect expectation has always been uh, uh, ambitious, but you never know what's gonna happen, especially in BO1. Um, people, you know, any, anybody can beat anybody in a BO1 scenario. So I'm very happy we went 2-0, to be honest. And, and I think that Origin and Schalke are actually the two strongest teams, I think, um, with Arconinas, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so I'm very happy with how the first week went. Yeah, and I was talking to Grabs about it. I mean, the team is clicking already. Uh, can you give me some specifics about the lineup you tried to build? Why these players? Um, so th there's two aspects of, uh, to it. There's aspect number one, which is you want to win, of course. Mm -hmm. But there's also aspect number two, which is the brand itself, G2 Esports. Uh, we have you know, certain attributes, and we are a certain way in social media, a certain way when we create content. And we want to make sure that whichever players we get on board mm -hmm. are on board with that as well. So it's a bit of a tricky scenario uh, sometimes. But I think this time we accomplished exactly what we wanted, which is having a great team. And at the same time, a team that can also have fun uh, with us and you try to build a long adventure here. 17 years combined for the players and the staff. Can you tell me a bit more about this, de this decision? Why to go for the full term? Well, you know, <laughs> again, you know, if you, if you could get LeBron James or, uh, you know, Messi, uh, Ronaldo, all these people, if you could get these people on, on a long-term basis, wouldn't you? Of course you would. So I, I, I think we have, I mean, I know we have the very best team we think we can have. And um, it just makes me very happy that gave, they gave us the trust of putting their careers and, and their peak of their careers, which is the next three years, um, you know, in, in our hands. I'm very happy and very grateful for that. And I will make sure I, I make up for it. And we, we as G2 make up for it. And you have so many more people trusting you. I mean, your fans, the G2 fans. Is there something you would like to say to them today? <laughs> it's, it's crazy because uh, in the last six months, people are starting to get um, kind of the G2 way, you know, they, they are starting to get that we are not just, you know, arrogant or whatever, we are just, we just have fun, you know? Mm -hmm. People are starting to get that. And I'm very happy about that because the first couple of years, even though we still had fun the same way, people saw it as, okay, these guys are, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how to read them, but I think they're arrogant. I think they are, uh, so I think at, the, at this very moment, people are starting to get us the right way. It makes me really happy because the whole content team, creative team, distribution team, everybody needs to work so hard and are so great people that uh, it, it makes me really happy and generally, you know, happy that, that this is this has been the case. So I appreciate everybody kind of developing that thought over time. Thanks so much. And it looks to be a very amazing year for G2. Thank you very much, Charles, so much. for being with me today. And for more on this game, let's head it back to Shox at the AD. Thank you very much, Law, and thank you very much, Ocelot. Yeah, indeed, I love it. He's saying, well, you know, it's all, at the end of the day, it's for fun. It's the results that count, and we want to put on a good show for our fans, both outside of the Rift and on the Rift. And on the Rift is where I was blown away by this game. Yeah. And I think if you look across the both games, G2 has played so far. Fantastic. And I got a pitch for Ocelot really quick, really easy. Yeah. Custom keycap. It's the R key with Yankos' face on it. And I feel like that perfectly summarizes our first two games because this yeah. man is killing people. He's looking happy while he's doing it. And that is apparently the G2 way. I've uh, just, yeah. I've been so impressed with what G2 have been able to do because one of the skepticisms was, you know, if you fill a team with this much talent, can it really work? Like we've seen it with Katie Rolster over in the LCK. Sometimes we've seen North American super teams. We've even seen European super teams just not work. But G2, it just seems to be that fun is the thing that's bringing them all together. You hear it from all the interviews, you hey, hear them chatting. The they're and they're, but they're legitimately, they're all just yeah. saying like, we just enjoy playing with each other I, so much. Just the fact that the power of fun it's is just <laughs> what's gonna dominate the <laughs> LEC is a little ridiculous. I was like, not analytical, but fun. No, fun fun uh, will dominate the LEC. Also, there is a thing as honey honeymoon period. We've seen that it's with a couple true. of teams. Very, very true. But let's not talk about the negative yet when we don't have to, you know? Let's sing the praises of the G2 that we saw today and let's break down exactly how they won their second game in the LEC.
It was early game prowess, and yes, we talk about these guys a lot, but that whole team is so active in getting those early kills. Yeah, and you see here just consistently collapsing where they need to go. Aatrox is already way down on this play. It looks like a fumble from Mickey there quite quickly on the headbutt, but it turns out to work in their favor, and really here is where you see kind of the Karthus nightmare coming to fruition. What's really important about this is this individual mechanical prowess coming out from G2. It happens throughout the early game where players just find kills. Yes, it is in part Yanko's influencing on the Karthus, but when you're stacked with this much talent, Wonder finds effectively a solo kill. Caps effectively finds a solo kill, and Perks finds a solo kill. Like, all these members are just doing what they've done for so long on so many different teams, which is be a big carry, and it just nets them such massive early game advantage. Yeah, exactly. And as you say, it is easy to go directly to those carries, to the perks and the caps. But we have to remember that Mickey pickup is also huge, you know? Uh, there's so much working in their favor, and they're working to better, together rather so beautifully as we see it there. 2.4K at 10 minutes. Uh, I believe it was 6K at 15 minutes. Ugh. Sadly for Schalke, worst game for them. But it, it seems like G2 is is just absolutely steamrolling their competition at this point in time. I mean, so, they are. Yeah, I mean, they are. <laughs> in part, it, it ties back in slightly to the draft once again. We talked about it yesterday, how you have that much flexibility. And today we saw it slightly less, but still to great effect with the Akali and the Aatrox that they're able to flip around. I think that giving Aatrox to this team is very scary. Putting it in the hands of Caps with the amount of pressure that he can generate makes it really difficult for teams to punish the Karthus, which means the Karthus can just gank whenever his ultimate is up. And Karthus, one of the biggest weaknesses that he has is solved by putting him in the jungle. The other weakness he has is getting invaded and shut down, solved by picking these strong lanes. So when you have the Karthus in the jungle with strong lanes, G2 have a picture-perfect formula success. Now you're sitting against Aatrox, incredibly strong laner, you drop to half health, you die, because the Karthus gets to push R and the Aatrox gets to finish you off. It is already so difficult to survive against players like Perks, like Caps, like Wonder. Now if I just take 200 health, 300 health off, at, just click, click of a button, push R. Yeah. It's impossible to get through this lane phase uh, without shedding some blood. As an aside, the player ranking, of course, ended up having perks in third place and then upset uh, in fourth, I believe, and yep. then Attila or the other way around. Uh, by the end of the split, yes. Yes, by the end of the split, you know, but we're following that step for step. So this was definitely an eye opener as well. This time perks on Kaisa, but, you know, it's very hard to say how that lane matchup is going to go in a different situation when the team is winning so hard. For me, what it felt like was that G2 read Schalke extremely well. They realized that they would put priority on the Ezreal. They knew they could get a good lane matchup with the Kaiser and the Alistair as well. And they just said, well, okay, if you're not going to draft really strong lanes, we're going to force you into this situation where you're relying on a Kha'Zix and a Thresh to shut us down. And if they can't pull it off, then you're not going to find any pressure in this game. And the moment they tried to make a play in the early game, it immediately fell apart. G2 get kills. And then they do not stop rolling through Schalke. Great stuff. Uh, guys. Look at this picture. What is the most interesting thing about this picture? When Perks yeah. acknowledges cats. <laughs> <laughs> we spent an entire season watching Reckless duck the high five. This man not afraid to high five his mid lane. Look it's at like, him in the eye. It's like Gohan going to Piccolo. He knows who his true father is. He's come. He's looking for the person who'll take him care of him. Hit him with the Dragon Ball Z. Let him know. Let the people know, man. <laughs> oh, right. but I love the synergy between them. We we saw the interview from the yesterday. Yeah. They seem like best friends already, and like. The synergy just seems to be there from the get-go. Definitely so. Perks, the man on your screen right now, is also our key up player of the game with 49% of the votes. Um, yeah, I'd like to know how much Caps got and how much Abada got. Maybe they can tell us because this was probably close. But hey, the first time, you know, he goes in that bottom lane with something we were expected to see in the bottom lane, and he crushes it. So good for him. We got to give acknowledgement to Mickey. The guy did set up a lot of the plays. He is a great support as well. While Perks did fantastic on the champion, Mickey always comes <laughs> to me after the show being like, yeah, Perks really deserved that MVP. I was just sitting there watching him. It's so crazy how <laughs> Perks landed all that CC to get those kills, right, guys? I mean, G2 as a whole is a monster team. They have not been challenged yet, so literally yep. any player is eligible for that player of the game any time they so play because they are just unstoppable. Yeah, uh, let's uh, theorize a little bit. You know, they look absolutely on a roll right now. G2, you know, we've got that draft flexibility. They know how to counter the opponents they're playing. They have the individual skill. They play together well. That's scary. You don't expect that of a reformed team in their first weekend in the LEC. So 
Yes, I ahead. think you made an excellent point earlier, Sharks, which is that if you took the name plates off, who does this team look like from last year? Fnatic. And it's very similar to yep. Fnatic, right? Like the synergy, the teamwork, the individual skill, it all seemed there. And now like that smooth transition for Caps just seems to be a perfect uh, concoction that is allowing for success. Here. Tell me, in the next couple of weeks, what is your dream matchup? G2 versus who? Fnatic. I mean, Gigi versus <laughs> Fnatic. In this form, I mean, who would put up the best fight with all, with, with I mean, all of you? I'm going to be honest. Are? Until the rest of the teams catch up to individual skill and also figure out how to deal with this G2 draft, no one is favored against G2. Yeah. Because you need to first figure out how to beat them in the draft or at least go in even, which hasn't happened yet. And then you need to be able to survive in the solo lanes. And the reality is you're against... Every single laner is number one or number two in their position, depending on how much you want to debate. Yep. And so a lot of these younger players just need time to get better. And it's just not a situation where G2, I expect to drop a single game. No, absolutely. I think that Fnatic and Misfits, depending on how quickly they can synergize and how they play as a team, uh, will determine a lot in who becomes the next primary competition for G2. Because I think time is the biggest thing, and it very much depends on how early they'll be going up against this powerhouse. Yeah, I mean, I agree. G2 Misfits right now looks like a fantastic matchup, and I also don't want to go too far. It was only two games, and we very don't true. really know what the power balance looks like, because Schalke was great yesterday, but we have only seen them twice as well. Everything can change, but I think we can give G2 the benefit of the doubt right now, and the seal of approval that they look the strongest. Yep. Maybe to be twarthered by Misfits if Misfits play later today and they crush it in their game versus SK Gaming. We could say that, but whoa, only two days in and uh, it's already getting absolutely crazy. It's almost like G2 didn't miss a beat and it's lovely to see. I cannot wait for the rest of the split. I want to see who their contenders are. Last split, we had the 10-0 Misfits. And in the second half of the split, they all fell apart. G2 were 6-0 in summer. Then they came back from Rift Rivals, and then they couldn't keep up the pace. That's going to be the ultimate question. Can they maintain this form and throughout the entirety of the Something split? I want people to think about, you're right that it is very early, is is this going to be the another, another team with a perfect split? It's very early, but we've seen Vitality with almost a perfect now first half. Crazy. We've seen 50% yeah. on Misfits. They got to that first half early, without a win. No? But this is the thing. You just got to start thinking about it early. Yeah. Is this a team that has the potential to do that? Is this this team on the same level relatively as the Hooney Rainover version of Fnatic? Right now it looks like yes, Ooh. but it's only two games in. Damn, okay, uh, we're going far down the rabbit hole here, but no matter what, if G2's mission is to get that title back this split, this is the best start they could have hoped for. Fantastic and on form. Uh, coming up next though, more matches, and we've got a matchup between two of our newest teams, Rogue and XL Esports, look to secure their first win. See you all in four and a half. All right, the